Hola, muy buenos días, buenas tardes. Hello, good morning or good afternoon, depending on where you are. I'm Diego Valero, president of Novaster and B-Way. En nombre de todos los organizadores. On behalf of all the organizers, the Inter-American Development Bank through the uh, Pension Network of Latin America, PLAC, and AIOS, uh, the Agency for Pension Supervisors, and uh, B-Way and Novaster, I give you, and the London School of Economics, I would like to welcome you to this ninth edition of the Global Pensions Program. Today, we have some wonderful guests as well. We'll be talking with them about uh, some new topics. We'll be talking about the Dominican Republic, which is now uh, now has its present scheme for 20 years. We'll be talking about excellence in customer care in the pension sector. And we'll talk about the influence of policy on pensions and of pensions on policy. And finally, for our closing session, we will have uh, the uh, Minister of the Economy of Chile, who will be speaking to us. If you agree, we can get started talking about the 20 years since the reform of the pension system and social security system in the Dominican Republic. First, we'll have the introduction of a book, Prosperity and Intentions, 20 Years of the Pension System in the Dominican Republic. David Tuesta will be telling us about the book. He is the editor. And then after that, as I was saying, we will have a discussion on the various uh, possibilities for structural pension reform. For that, we'll have three specialists who will be sharing their experiences and their knowledge about this with us. We have the pleasure of having with us Maria Victoria Facio, who is a senior specialist in the IDB's Labor Markets Division. Curtis Hakes, uh, the from the president of the Dominican Association of Pension Fund Administrators, ADAF, and also Mr. Ramon Contreras is from the superintendents of pensions of the Dominican Republic. I'll remind you once again that you can send us your questions during the presentations by using the Q&A button. And after the speakers have given their presentations, they will be answering the questions that we've received. Without further ado, I will now introduce the first of our speakers today. It's a pleasure, a huge pleasure and source of pride for me to be able to introduce to you David Tuerta, president of the Private Council of Competitiveness of Peru. Director of FinTech Inbox Solutions for Latin America, Associate Professor at the Business Studies uh, School at IA University and uh, a researcher at the University of Barcelona. He has been a Minister of the Economy and Finance and the Minister in Peru and CAF, and he has led research projects with the IDB, the World Bank, the OECD. He's also worked for the Peruvian government uh, after he was minister in different roles. He's been an advisor. And since the 90s, he has been a guest of various governments as an expert on uh, reform processes. He has a PhD in economics from the Pontificia Universidad de Economica of Peru. He has a master's from the University of Minnesota. He's published several books and has also written for scientific magazines and periodicals. And he's also a great friend. And thus it is a great pleasure for me to introduce him. Go ahead, David. Thank you very much, Diego, for that presentation. I want to also thank the event organizers for inviting me to tell you about the highlights of this book. It is uh, going through the printing process now. 
we hope that uh, the book will be ready early next year and it focuses on the 20 years uh, that have gone by since the pension system reform in the Dominican Republic and some of the milestones that have been reached. So we're just reviewing the accomplishments uh, that uh, have uh, that we can see and also what is still to be done. Also, we need to take into account that uh, this is an ongoing process. We found evidence along the way, not only in the Dominican Republic, but in also in other parts of the world. And uh, we felt that it was important evidence to include in the book as this as part of this process of uh, reflecting and evaluating, reviewing what we've done. The book talks about prosperity and is it prosperity for pensions or pensions for prosperity might be a question we might ask ourselves. And there is an endogenous relationship between both concepts and principle. And then there's the topic of uh, prosperity as a, a standalone topic. We can have different approaches to it from a cultural perspective. What do we define as prosperity? Is it having an income and resources? But we could also include other aspects. It's a broad discussion that is taking place in economics. What do we understand by uh, prosperity or even the concept of well-being? But we always have a uh, point of reference, a baseline that we can take a look at as a, a measurable level of uh, well-being. And there's also the life cycle to take into account whatever concept uh, we adhere to, or if we could assign a magic number to the concept of prosperity, we would want to achieve a certain balance within our regarding this concept in our lives. We also need to bring in a concept or a, an approach. And uh, we'll talk about the Pareto equilibrium, which is talking about maximizing one's well-being and achieving that balance as long as we don't cause any damage. And I think it's the same idea when we talk about pensions. We want to provide these pensions. We want to create a mechanism for them to be available, whether it's a public-private partnership or through various different innovative ways. But the goal, the ultimate goal is the well-being or the prosperity, but in a balanced way for all the citizens of a country. So for example, a pension system that provides subsidies to a small group that uh, perhaps is in a position to save. I don't want to give an example of a particular country, but perhaps then there's an issue with uh, an intergenerational debt where the future users are paying for the current ones. Or for example, there can be an example of the pension systems we had in the past in Latin America, where we sought short-term benefits using fiscal monitor monetary resources. In some countries, the pension systems caused hyperinflationary situations and did not generate any type of prosperity in the end. So this leads us to think about the idea that uh, creating a pension system requires different aspects to be brought in and broadening our concept of what prosperity is for an entire country. This is what we need to take into account when we're designing a pension system. So that's the context in which the book was written. The chapters are always seeking to give answers to this question of how we seek prosperity, always bringing up uh, the restrictions, the constraints that we face today in the future, intergenerational constraints, intragenerational constraints. And as a reference, we look at the milestone of the pension reform, which next year will be 
the 20th an anniversary since the ratification of law 8701, which modified or reformed the pension system. So we want to look at the challenges that were faced and also include concepts related to lessons learned or new tools, advances and challenges that uh, other countries as well, many countries in the world are facing or will be facing. I'd like to also share with you the structure, at least, of the book. Let's see if I can share it. If I go over here. I can try to move this. There, there it is. I wanted to also mention the authors of the book. We had the pleasure of working with Nick Barr. You heard Diego this morning, Edgar Robles, who has a long experience in academic and regulatory activities. Jaime Garcia, also excellent researchers, uh, economists, actuarial experts. Manuel Lozano as well. And the book consists of 10 parts. Basically, in the first part, we introduce the objectives of the book. And the second one was contributed mainly by Nick Barr, where he does a cross-cutting uh, analysis of uh, what we have learned about pensions during this century. And then there's a third section that looks at the challenges for informal pension systems, then behavioral economics. It's Diego who contributed this topic to the book. I think he gave a presentation about this yesterday. And there's a lot that not just the Dominican Republic, but also other countries in Latin America can begin to include. And the IDB has done some very interesting work in addressing these matters of behavioral economics. And then in the fifth section, we go into more detail about the Dominican case. There's a sec sixth chapter that talks about investments and uh, some of the contributions based on some uh, simulations done by Edgar Robles. Then there's a seventh chapter that focuses more on identifying projections from an actuarial point of view. And that was a uh, long and uh, very complete work that was done in this regard in the Dominican Republic. And then the eighth chapter seeks to address the concept of pensions for everyone, universal pensions, uh, What? Uh, how does this help the entire economy? What do we need for that? What are the inclusive or inclusion effects that uh, we can look for? And then there's a ninth chapter that um, again talks about the challenges that are still pending, where we can still improve and move forward on these matters so that we can see a system that continues to improve. So this book has a structure, as you can see, uh, that is uh, perhaps elusive to Julio Cortázar's uh, works and since we're talking about the dominican republic i'd like to refer to some central or core aspects that i think we should highlight and these refer to problems that many other pension systems in latin america have as well in the case of the dominican republic and um, this is mentioned in several of the chapters of the book the there's a situation where the design of the pension systems on paper looks wonderful in principle it includes uh, all the ingredients of a good recipe it has a contributory pillar it has another one that is contributory but subsidized that minimum pension and there's another fully subsidized pillar, that's for the non-contributory type of pension. So it's uh, well-designed in terms of uh, 
achieving a universalization of pensions based on these three pillars. I don't think there are so too many countries that have developed the idea quite so well on paper, on paper, but in practice, only the contributory pillar has been developed. So the Dominican pension system in principle has advanced in an incomplete way. And this contributory pillar has borne the entire load of it. And in addition to that, there are other, the typical fiscal problems that countries face to a great extent, these other elements, the subsidized elements have not uh, been able to be added. And there are other problems shared with the rest of the region, the informal jobs, uh, pockets of poverty in the country and uh, other areas where the country is falling behind in a way that's quite visible in terms of uh, parametric aspects. For example, the uh, retirement age needs to be updated. Uh, some of this has been uh, included in some guidelines for reform from last year, but we still need to work on it. Also, we need to work on the contributions. They're rather small as compared to contributions in other countries. So we have a model, a pension system with a replacement ratio so far of about 30.5%. And this um, is something that Diego and Jaime Garcia and Manuel Lozano have worked on. And they've seen that uh, with a few improvements that to a great extent are included in more recent laws, this replacement ratio can move up to 40%. And we're talking about changes that ultimately do not involve much other than a better management. Now, if we included at least part of the subsidized schemes that are still pending, then this replacement ratio could increase even up to 60%. Another important aspect that we highlight in the chapters has to do with the contribution made by the return on investment generated by the new system on the size of the pension that members can ultimately receive three fourths of what the pension is made of is represented purely by return on investment so that is an important aspect and it's also a challenge in terms of what this will mean for the future what the this return on investment will be in the future, and it might be reduced perhaps as it has happened in other countries. It's also interesting uh, that the pension system has also meant that it's more inclusive. Uh, some interesting uh, constraints exist in terms of uh, the members, but there has been some uh, economic growth that has been facilitated with this by Ed, with Edgar Robles and Diego, we saw that the Dominican uh, pension uh, system has been a factor for growth. It's got an accumulated 20% level of growth so far, simply thanks to uh, this pension system and the multiplier effect it has in terms of savings and uh, the ability to provide more jobs and more economic activity for the rest of the population. We've done some calculations regarding poverty reduction in the Dominican Republic. Without the pension system, poverty would be three points higher, three percentage points higher than it is right now. And we've done other calculations regarding a better access to credit, lower interest rates and macroeconomic stability. So during these few minutes, I don't have much time left. I just wanted to point out that the this journey, this uh, so far 20 year journey of the reform of the pension system in the Dominican Republic is a good time to review it, think about what needs to be strengthened still in the future or enhanced. And in fact, the rest of the chapters actually focus on that, 
gathering up lessons learned also from behavioral economics that chapter was written by diego and other uh, issues that Nick Barr mentions in his chapter and other experiences uh, related to micro pensions and others add that to uh, more innovative systems, maybe something different than we've seen so far, especially for self-employed people and others who work in different ways. I want to thank Adaf, the Fund uh, Pension Fund Administrator Association of the Dominican Republic for giving uh, the entire team of authors for the book a welcome and uh, the ability to work and all the feedback, uh, positive and negative, uh, what has worked, what hasn't, because um, the Dominican Republic wants to continue to strengthen its pension system.